the week. Because first day of the week is what we call, I don't know where they got the Esther rabbit. Maybe it has a long history, you need to check it out. But it's the first day of the week the Bible says. And so these are the proof or the facts that we can, we can glean upon that, that tells us that indeed, Jesus came on time. He died on Friday, as you will see, preparation day. And he rested on the Sabbath according to the command. He rested in the tomb. Isn't that beautiful? Even Jesus himself obeyed God's command even when, he's, when he died for, for our sins. And on Sunday, the first day of the week, he was resurrected. So I praise the Lord for this event that no man can alter, that no human being can change. Matthew 27, verse 64. The Bible continues to say, Therefore, this was Pilate, command that the tomb be made secure until the <coughs> Sunday, third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away. So they have this, they have this, uh, a little uh, uh, hesitation. We need to secure this because, you know, the people are saying that he's the Messiah, he's the, he's the, he has the power to resurrect the dead. And uh, they might use it to uh, 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 steer up strife to rebel against our kingdom. And so they wanted to be secure. They want to secure the tomb. And listen to what the Bible say. And, they can, and I continue in verse 64. And say to the people, he has risen from the dead. So the last deception. Listen to the terms that they are using in the word of God. Deception will be worse than the at the very beginning of Christ's sacrifice, those leaders, religious leaders, were telling the people that Jesus was a deceiver. And it reverberates even until now. But I'd like to tell you that Saturday is when Jesus rested on the tomb according to the commandment. Isn't that amazing? I find it very amazing. Let's continue in Matthew chapter 27, verse 65. The Bible says, Pilate said to them, you have a guard, go your way, make it as secure as you know how. And so, so they went and made the tomb in your city guides. You can, you can take, it out, take it out and right there, secure, sealing the stone and setting the guard. What does it tell me from the word of God? It tells me that there is this fact that the people during the time... Uh, the governor and his cohorts or his soldiers, they are trying to, to do their best that, they, that people will not believe that Jesus was resurrected. If, if, if something happens, they will just say, you know, the disciples stole his body. You know, it's, it's not a resurrection. It's like there's no supernatural thing that happened. It's just like those uh, people right now, they, we call it the higher critical scholars who would say, ah, the, the, the supernatural elements of the Bible, they don't happen. It's a myth. And I read some of the media uh, uh, excerpts in this uh, following week that uh, they are criticizing what the Bible is saying. But I would like to tell you that the Bible is very forthright. That it is saying that even the governor and the soldiers, they were trying to secure, seal, and set a guard of Jesus to you. You would, you would agree with me tonight, Sunday is when Jesus was resurrected. Now, let me, let me invite you, maybe you could close your eyes, relax, imagine with me tonight, let's go back to the time of creation. It was very beautiful, right? <laughs> Jesus, in fact, or Jesus, the, the active agent of creation was saying, you know, it was very good. It's just like, you know, when, how, how many of you here are hobbies? Do you like hobbies? You know, when you are, your hobby is like you're making, a, what's your, what's a common hobby that people are so... Uh, you know, building up Lego, that's a hobby for kids. And when you say, when you finish building up, it's like, very good, very nice, perfect. The same is true from the hands of the creators. God was saying everything that he has created was very good. That was from the first to the sixth day. But on the seventh day, the Bible says, this is not even, this is not, this was not, this verse was not even, uh, this verse was spoken there was no single Jew that, ha that, that appeared on earth. It was just Adam and Eve. It was Genesis chapter 2 verse 2. The Bible says, and on the, what everybody? Seven. On the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had. Was God tired? No, God deliberately had chosen.
to stop working. The Hebrew word there, to stop, cease. He was conscious. He was not tired. He was conscious. And then it continues to say, and he rested on the seventh day. There has been no Jew that was ever born when this was pronounced on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. And then it continues in God. What happens, everybody? Blessed. And then, and then the seventh day and sanctified. You might be asking, what is sanctified? What does sanctify mean? Sanctified is just to set apart for a holy purpose. It's just, you don't want to use it for an ordinary purpose. Just like my suit, I have only one suit for, for the Sabbath, which I use. And the other, I don't use it for the other, for the other day because I, I, I feel it's a sanctified suit. <laughs> you know, that I would honor God with my suit that I, 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 I chosen not to use on other, other ordinary days. So God blessed, sanctified because in it he rested from all his work, from all his work which God had created and made. From the first to the sixth day, God deliberately had chosen to be with Adam and Eve and all the creation and all the creatures. So that he will enjoy, together with Adam and Eve, the dominion that he has given. Friends, I would like to make a statement tonight, a very powerful statement. Obedience is never, it's not legalism. Nobody will accuse you if you obey God for being legalistic. This is not about legalism. Well, there are many people who are accusing, oh, you keep the Sabbath, you're a legalistic. I'm telling you, when you obey, it's never legalism. Let us go to what the Bible says. In Mark chapter 2, verse 27, the Sabbath was made for men and not men. For the Sabbath. It's just like saying uh, the, the, the calf or the hat was made for the head and not the head for the head, for the calf, right? Do you, do you, do you follow me? The, did you get it? You, the, the, the calf was made for the, hat, uh, for the head. And not the head made for the cap. cap or hat. The same is true with the Sabbath. I hope you get it. I'm driving a point here that is very crucial. Therefore, the Son of Man, capital letter M. Who is this? The Son of Man? It's Jesus. He is the, also Lord of the Sabbath. And this excites me because when God what, visited Adam and Eve in the creation, the creatures... He, he, was the son of, he was the Son of God. He was the active agent in, in creation. And He's also, in the future, the Son of Man. The Lord of the Sabbath. He is the man. He is the God that we worship on the Sabbath. He's the Lord. And when you are Lord, your subjects obey you. And then let's continue to uh, examine Exodus chapter 20 verse 8 to 11. The Bible tells us that the heart of the commandment of God remember. This is the only commandment that tells us the word that begins with the word remember. Everything else begins with do not. Do not make any do not worship. Do not. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not commit adultery. Do not uh, uh, bear false witness. Do not be greedy or compete. Remember the Sabbath day. This is about 2,000 years or so after creation. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. And it, you shall not do any work. You, nor your son, nor your daughter, your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cow, nor your stranger that is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them. And beautiful, he rested on the Sabbath day. I love this, you know. I was, when I was young, I was roaming around from churches to churches. I was looking for what does it mean to be in other churches. I've been to other churches. But when I was reading the Word of God and I was trying to study for myself, all the rest of them are just keeping the first day of the week. And the Bible is telling me, like this verse, that God rested, blessed, <coughs> the seventh day. And I begin to... 
And I begin to examine and explore more. And that's why right now I'm standing in front of you as a witness of what I believe to be God's Word. And as we go along tonight, you will, you will, you will try to pick up the pieces of the puzzle, a little bit of the pieces of the puzzle that you might try to understand and as you leave here tonight. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Meaning say, He kept it holy. He kept His promise. He kept the Sabbath day holy. And then, I would like to tell you tonight, in this study, that Sabbath is God's window of hope. Let me explain why I call it God's window of hope. If, we, if you are a student of the Word, if you're reading the Word of God, let me tell you, the Sabbath is the window of God's hope. It's because, first, Sabbath opens us a view. Just like the window, when it opens a view, you will see the greeneries or, the, or, or whatever, wherever you are, you will see the panoramic view. It opens us a view to God as our Creator. That He is our Creator, that He came down after He created, that He is our Creator and Lord, and that He is with us made flesh. That Jesus is the one who created us. In our time, there have been many contentions where we come from. Some of us thought that we came from, or some of the people, the erudites, or those people who are teaching in the universities, in, in, in the great uh, halls of learning, uh, Harvard, Princeton, Oxford, the Ivy Leaguers, uh, the Ivy League uh, universities, they're all teaching that we did not come from God. It's just very simplistic. We came from a very uh, complicated way. We came from the Big, big Bang, and then we, 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 we probably matured into tadpoles, and then tadpoles uh, matured into uh, frogs, and frogs mature into uh, uh, at least a little bit of a good-looking monkey, and then monkey, we matured to apes, and then eventually, as, we, as time travels, we became, we became homo sapiens. We became erect, the human being. What they are teaching us is from the generation, or from imperfection to perfection, what the Bible is teaching us is we are perfect, we became imperfect because of sin. It's opposite of what the Bible is saying. That's why the devil would like us to believe that we are not created, that we just came here by chance, that we have no purpose, we have no hope. We just live what, according to what we feel is right. We are not responsible for what evil we do. That's why it's sad that there are many. Have you noticed, have you heard in the news that there are many people, if they're, if they're having grudges, they will just bring a gun and kill somebody in schools, even a Christian school. Why is this happening? This has not been heard of. A Christian school, seven dead, few wounded. It started with Columbine. Young people would like to kill. What's happening to this United States of America? Ah, simple. It's because they are not responsible to anybody. They don't have a creator. After they die, nothing. But the Bible tells us the Sabbath is a window of God's hope because it opens us a view to God as our Creator. The Sabbath gives us a glimpse of God's love. Isn't that love that when a, a Lord or a, or a God who created you visited you and stayed with you and enjoyed celebrate with you? Isn't that love? Isn't that grace when somebody uh, from a supreme being, so to speak, comes and visits your homes to be with you and dine with you? For me, a Sabbath is, a, is God's window of hope because it tells me, it shows me, it showcases God's love and grace. The Sabbath refreshes our restlessness. You know that even the earth, we came from the, from the ground, right? From the earth. Even the earth needs to rest. You cannot just plant all the time. The soil needs rest so that the nutrients will be re replenished. A wise God, an awesome God who created us knows where we come from. And so, when we rest on one day that He specified, not just any other day, when He specified on the seventh day, we are refreshing our restlessness.